an impressive slice of life. The police had a lot on him and at the same time, nothing at all. Amateurs. He's even been putting up... It seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation, John. So what's the infiltration plan, Sherry? I'd go in through the rooftop if we had a harpoon gun. Are you able to help me? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge.
These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. May I ask you something? Sorry, we don't see much here. That's our way in, Sherry. Hey, yo. This is private property. You lost something. I'm here to discuss business with Mr. Bernadotti. I tried the front door, but... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... Cho! Did try to resolve this peacefully. I'm coming. No, you killed him. I couldn't miss the party. I'm coming for you. against murder. Take a rest, my friend. The snuff's ready. Kept him alive. Give him the pepper snuff. Oh, you killed him. Oh. It won't work this way. I couldn't miss the party. Overcome the brute now. I thought we were against murder. No, oh, you killed him.
Sherry, look. This seems familiar. Let's see what's hidden there. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old at least. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's all right. I won't harm you. Like you didn't harm the folks on the way here. May I ask you something? Sorry, we don't see much here. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll stretch it to pieces. Keep standing in my way and no one will ever see you again. Right, so. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear... I've got to... It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. Cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here, and we shall talk.
Whenever you're ready. I'd hate to intrude. Niccolo Bernadotti, I presume? The name is Sherlock Holmes, and I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. Is that so? The man you sent to the refugee camp failed in his task. He impaled himself on his own blade. Clumsy and chaotic, and... For a man who just broke onto my property, you are more businessman than brute. You have my attention, Mr. Holmes. Do not waste it. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any one I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. 
It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, and I am compelled to ask why you want it. Who is the man visible in the photograph? An associate? Not yet, Mr. Holmes. Though with this picture, that may change. The man in the photo is a British envoy on Cordona. What exactly do you want from him? My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. Ha! <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy, but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotti. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph. And the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. The front door's now open, sir. You can leave through it. If you want, of course.
Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Warren presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio. Perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more then. I found the source of Mercurio's artistic inspiration, a photograph. What troubled me was that the sexual act captured was non-consensual. She was violated? Dear God, how despicable. Her abuser was in fact the British envoy. Mercurio took a picture of him committing the atrocity and then used it as artistic inspiration. I had no idea a mere break-in would eventually expose such barbarity. Mr. Vogel, I want you to make everything public, including the photograph. I'm sure you have a connection at the Cordona Chronicle. Ah, uh, Mr. Holmes, loyal to your own truth till the end. Yes, I'm acquainted with the staff of the Chronicle. The story is sensational and will surely draw attention to the gallery. But you must be aware that exposing the scandal will further hurt the victim. Does that not bother you? No matter what one does, the truth tends to come out, as well it should. I won't be the one to stand in its way. Though it's only your subjective truth being exposed. Not that I'm judging. It's perfectly reasonable for everyone to have their own views. When you called me, you knew exactly what you would get. Oh, but I'm not like you, Mr. Holmes. I cannot be sure of anything. Regardless, I must thank you, for art's sake. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I had hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained, specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I presume. Correct. With whom do I have the pleasure? Emilio Estero. Happy to make your acquaintance. I am here on behalf of Mycroft, your brother. He is on his way to Cordona. In the meantime, he requests your assistance with a sensitive matter. My orders are to provide you with the details. 
You have my attention, Mr. Estevo. Mark Ridley, the son of General Arthur Ridley, is being blackmailed. Suffice to say, the compromising material is of a delicate nature. The matter is of no small importance to the Crown, especially given the status quo on Cordona. What does Mycroft want me to do? Retrieve the blackmail material? No, sir, nothing of the sort. Mark Ridley is meeting the blackmailer atop the old city bridge tower. You shall observe from a distance, then establish the blackmailer's identity. Do not attempt to arrest him. We'll handle it from there. Saving the best for yourself? Fine. There is a cafe just over the bridge that provides a good vantage point. Please report to me when you are done. I'll be waiting for you here, and remember, discretion is of the essence. A bizarre object, and yet oddly familiar. Did you just remember something? Yes. A room full of curiosities and artifacts. I think I can find it in the manor. Sherlock. So, you continue to pursue the imaginary. I had hoped you might have got all this out of your system by now. Mycroft. What are you doing here? Get out of my house. It's my house, actually. I've come to bring you back. I have no interest in returning, let alone with you. I know you lied about Mother all these years, claiming she was merely ill, but she was unstable. She never had tuberculosis. She was not recuperating, but mentally deteriorating, and you never once thought to tell me. How dare you? I shall not indulge this petulant tantrum. You can just tire yourself out and then slink back to London with your tail between your legs. Just tell me everything. I'm an adult now. I... Show me the basic courtesy of an explanation. You know what I will find out eventually. The goal was stability, and that's what you got. The right thing for everyone was to try and move on from her passing. The consequences of one's actions determines what is right or wrong. Yes, exactly. The ends justify the means. After leaving Cordona, Sherlock, you had a normal childhood. In London, I was able to support you, guide you, shape you into a fine and productive young man. You have so much potential, so much to offer society. But that's not the end. Now I've found the truth, and it has shattered everything I knew about her, about you, and about myself. I feel unstable because of you. Your actions were not justified. Lying never is. Oh, grow up, Sherlock. It was a white lie which has as much use in the realm of the interpersonal as the international. It is time you come to accept that some things are bigger than yourself. Oh, you are full of it. You like to pretend you care about the big picture, but it's just an ego trip. You like knowing more than others. You like greasing palms and rubbing shoulders with the rich and powerful. You like having eyes and ears everywhere. The fact it helps the nation is incidental, because all you care about is yourself. It's true. I have agents everywhere, including Cordona. 
If you weren't so damn stubborn, you'd realize that means I'm only here for you. I remember returning home with a pair of perfect sticks. We wanted to turn them into training swords. Oh, that's right. We stood there, frozen, staring at something huge in the main hall. It was a giant aquarium with a living mermaid in it. Impossible. It must have been something else. Oh, of course, that mortifying hoax presently taking up space in our front yard. Well, fine. Your memory's better than mine. But I'm sure we started examining it immediately. And someone else was around, too. It was my mother. She asked what I thought of the artifact. You were really concentrating and holding something in your hand. I inspected it with a magnifying glass and was able to confirm it was made of two different skeletons. The mermaid was a fake. And so it was time to smash the thing. Your mother took a hammer and... <laughs> Slow down, John. That's not how it happened. I remember other people joined us. The workers took the artifact and placed it into the Cabinet of Curiosities. It became part of Mother's collection of fakes. She always said that the truth lies in the details. This mermaid helped me to learn that. Ah yes, my mother's studio. She was an authenticator, and this was her cabinet of cute. Well, I never saw the point. Fakes I ever what saw. does it matter if it's some artifact is real it was or a polar not? Bear. It still exists. Well, the white paint on the brown fur wasn't noticeable. I remember this cozy blanket. It was perfect for. Wigwam! Oh, that was a joy to build them, imagining ourselves as wayfarers on the other side of the world. Oh, I remember these. We used them to spar together until Mycroft found out and forbade us from using real weapons. So many calling cards. Mycroft liked to keep useful people at hand. Reliable and driven. I recognize Mycroft's handwriting. Officer Luciano J. Placido. K. 
carefully opened. Carefully opened. Dated 24th of April, 1869. was always closed. Only Mycroft knew how to open it. I remember we tried to break it open and spy on him, but alas, had no success. Maybe today's the day. Oh, Sherry. Look, it's Roger. This jolly old man's well preserved. He even looks refreshed. I doubt he drew much interest at the auction. That's for the best. I'd be upset if he fell into the wrong hands. The so-called mummy of a Persian princess. The defrauders did good work, but missed one small detail. It's the mummy of a man. And this one was brought from a German museum. They claimed it belonged to Vikings. Nonsense, of course. Vikings never had horns on their helmets. Clearly, it was deliberately torn. I wonder why someone would do that. The Tulpa. Studies in Tibetan Mentalism. The Tulpa. Studies in Tibetan Mentalism. An impressive number of bookmarks. Someone was rather obsessed with this subject. The full plate armor of Sir Robert Saunford. I was told my father won it in a wager. Armor is armor, but look at his sword. Oh, how badly I wanted to wield the blade. Mother said Maybe this was among the hunting trophies of a Scottish viking. I'm starting to remember something. So he tried to persuade everyone that his forest was inhabited by these beasts. It would have been thrilling if it were actually true. Another fake Holy Grail. Its owner claimed to be the heir of King Arthur. Scarcely believable. He also insisted a deadly rabbit was hunting him.
Watkinson and Holman, Chapter 1, by Wallace Diorum. Oh, Mycroft. He always acts so serious, but then reads tripe like this. John, if I remember correctly, you couldn't put this book down. Eighteen fifty two, Bingley, West Yorkshire. This photo caused a lot of fuss. My mother spent some time to prove it was a fake. Ah, the memory comes back. We snuck about watching him. He closed the drawer and went to the hall. We were like two shadows crawling behind him. He opened the door to the postman, and they exchanged documents. If it was a real postman, of course. The painting on the wall was slightly a tilt. He stopped and straightened it. Then he threw some logs into the fire and sat in his armchair to read. It's as boring now as it was then. I'm sorry, Sherry, but I think that's it. Wait, John, we never use the fireplace in the mornings. What if... A bit of juniper in the fireplace created a soothing atmosphere. It's the little things, isn't it? I think this is what we're looking for. We made it. So what's there? Single malt whiskey, Mycroft's favorite. Gifted by Queen Victoria herself. Otto Richter. 
This one is rather thick. Mycroft can be truly dogged in his research. Dossiers on the most influential people on Cordona. Mycroft always had a habit of building files on everyone he met. I used this ladder to look at the top shelf, right? On the day of Mother's breakdown upstairs. Right you are, Sherry. We heard a noise. I can't recall of exactly what. And we didn't have a great view from behind the statue. Books and papers from the table somehow ended up on the floor. Now it's coming to the surface. I feel it. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. <gasps> Come on, Sherry. Let's go outside. Wait. Did you hear that? Come here, Sherry. You call this progress? Charlatan. Amateur. I'm not letting you anywhere near my mother again. So there was a quarrel between them. I heard a noise in the hall. Let's check it out. 